While I don't know exactly if my story classifies as weird or strange, I figured you would at least appreciate to hear it. Every year in June, my husband and I like to go on our annual camping trip. This year, in 2020, we headed down to Central Oregon, near Crater Lake. This happens every year in June, right around the summer solstice. It's the best time of year to go, and the Pacific Northwest offers a plethora of places to explore, camp, hike, swim, and a multitude of other outdoor activities to keep yourselves entertained and enjoying the outdoors. Instead of staying put at one solid campground for the entirety of the week that we're camping, we like to kind of hop around every couple days. Every campground offers something new and different, and different sights to see, smell, and check out. And it's always fun to explore new areas. So forgive me when I can't exactly remember the name or location that this happened, but it did make my husband and I feel very uneasy about the entirety of the area in which we were camping. After pulling into what appeared to be a desolate campground, we thought we had struck gold. Having no one else there on the weekdays is amazing as it is, but having virtually no one to compete with is very nice. It's not that there's a problem with other people, it's just that it's more quiet. And it's nice to have privacy, more to yourself. We were approached by one of the rangers before we could even get all the way in. He looked very unnerved, to say the least. We started talking to him, and he asked us what our plans were, where we were from, how long we planned on staying. You could tell he was trying to make small talk, but we kind of wanted to cut to the chase. My husband and I can both visibly see he was clearly bothered by something, a little pale, sweaty, kept checking over his shoulder, just acting nervous. My husband is pretty assertive and outright, and so just quickly asked him if there's anything going on we should know about. And the ranger got really quiet. You could tell he was a shy person, not really wanting to talk about whatever was bothering him. Just told us, and while looking us both in the eye, that if we plan to stay here, we shouldn't make it a long stay. Then, following that up with saying that many campers appeared to have problems while they were staying in this campground, and it's not like this campground was huge by any means. It's your pretty much average-sized campground. No bigger or smaller than any other one around the area. We kind of just looked at each other, shrugged our shoulders, and carried on our way. Said our goodbyes. We got set up, and there really was nobody else around. Which we thought was odd, but not too odd. Since this was a Tuesday, in the middle of the week. Traffic at campgrounds in the summertime during the weekdays are usually pretty nil, or next to nothing, depending on the campground. Although you usually do see at least a few people, I think we were the only ones there, and there were more than enough spots. It's usually Friday through Monday where all the heavy traffic is, so we just assumed that we missed all the heavy traffic. After getting everything unpacked and comfortable, that first night was a little weird. We heard strange sounds outside of our tent, just beyond our campsite. A weird raspy breathing, sniffing sounds. It sounded more like a big bear, which my husband was worried about, although he was pretty sure that Central Oregon did not have big grizzly bears. Black bears, yeah, but this sounded much larger. At one point, he had gone outside of his tent to go pee, instead of walking all the way to the bathroom which is at the other end of the campsite, he decided to just try and go behind our tent. About halfway in, he cut off his stream and came back in the tent all wide-eyed, said he believes there's something or somebody out there watching him. This caused me to feel a little on edge, considering I know how my husband is, and he's really not phased by too much. Even back when we were younger, and for a couple of months, stayed in this awful, cockroach-ridden apartment, but that's a different story entirely. He was pretty pale, wide-eyed, and breathing really quickly. I don't even think he slept much that night. Kept saying he felt like somebody was outside our tent. But I tried to assure him that everything was fine, and that we'd be okay. If anything, he did have his gun right in the car. That following morning, we got up early, just as the sun was rising. It was beautiful, 
as much of Central Oregon is, we made our coffee and decided to try and get over the fear of last night by going on a nice little nature morning walk. There was a trail right by our campsite, which went down to a little river. We thought that would be a perfect way to relax and to get rid of all the bad thoughts from the previous night. After eating breakfast and drinking our coffee, we go on the trail, and before we get down to the river, we notice an incredibly large scat pile right off the trail, maybe by three or four feet, like somebody just veered off the trail right there in the tall grass, popped a squat, and, well, did their business. Although, the problem with this is at first, I thought it'd be bear scat, but my husband, who decided to inspect it further, told me it was not bear scat. In fact, it looked a lot like human scat, except much, much larger. We also noticed a thick, musky trash odor all throughout the trail, on and off. We weren't sure what to attribute that to, since there were no dumpsters nearby, and we're pretty much in the forest. There's no reason why we should smell those things. We got down to the river, had a pretty normal day, tried to spend at least up until noon there, went back up and hung out at camp the majority of the day. That night, things got a little crazier. We began hearing screaming, shaking of trees, and at one point, a large tree near a campsite sounded like it had fallen over, starting with a huge bang, like a semi-truck running into a large oak tree, and the tree falling. My husband and I were screaming, because it was so loud in your tent. We had flashlights. We went out there and looked, but there was visibly no signs of any trees fallen, and the air was thick. It was very creepy. The best way I could summarize the feelings was that we were being closely watched by somebody or something, what I assume to be an animal, but I don't know. I feel that there was more than one if it was somebody or something. My husband might disagree, but we didn't talk about it much, so after having a second night of being completely exhausted from not sleeping well from the first night, we barely slept the second night at all, and getting up in the morning, we quickly had a very strong cup of coffee, got everything together, and we decided we weren't going to waste our time here anymore. There was just something off. Maybe these were the problems that that ranger had been talking about. As we were pulling out of the park, we waved to the ranger. We didn't waste any time with conversation or small talk. We got out of there and decided to go somewhere far away, at least by 70 or 80 miles, a little more north, where we felt we would be safer. I've told this story of mine to a couple of my close girlfriends. Some of them think it's very weird. Another one thinks we just heard stuff, or that it could have been a bear. But my one friend is certain that we might have encountered a clan of Bigfoot, I don't even know anything about Bigfoot, but since it could be a possibility that that is what we experienced, I thought I would reach out to you, since you might have answers, and you have a lot of videos on Bigfoot and weird creatures that aren't normal animals. But I don't know, maybe it could have just been a bear. I don't know too much about bears either, so hopefully with the details I've given you, you can clear things up for me. I used to work for the Maine Fish and Wildlife for a very short time, shortly after I got out of college. It was a pretty normal job. I didn't stay there long, but I did see something that I was told not to talk about, and this interest hasn't really gone anywhere until the past year, since quarantine. I kind of accidentally stumbled upon your channel, and I have to admit, I've gotten sucked in and I figured it was time to come forward with my own weird experience. Judging by your videos and your stories, perhaps this would be a dogman, but having no knowledge of this creature, I can't say for certain. All I can do, all I can do is give you an eyewitness testimony, and you decide from there what's truth and what's not. I was actually off work at the time, not on shift. The area of Maine that I was in is very rural, much like a lot of the state, and we do have big moose up there, and if you're not careful, they can decimate your tiny car. Unfortunately for me, I had a tiny Toyota Camry. It wasn't really going to stand anywhere up to a moose. 
but luckily I was never hit. But in front of me, about 20 feet, one of the largest moose I'd ever seen comes barreling out of the woods to my left, runs across the road, and into the forest to my right. Upon seeing this, I had already slammed on my brakes, but what was giving chase to it is what alarmed me. Following, not even two seconds after this moose disappeared into the woods on my right, four incredibly large wolves on all fours, black like jet black, came barreling after it, paying no attention to my tiny car. They were well on the hunt. After they crossed, I thought to myself, I had no idea Maine even had wolves, let alone wolves that size. These were wolves you'd see on like something of Game of Thrones, a fantasy show or TV, where it's not even meant to exist. Or I think they call them dire wolves. Massive wolves you could ride. I don't know if you're familiar with any of the Warcraft universe, or any of the World of Warcraft games, but the wolves kind of resembled the wolves in that game. I believe they're called wargs, and just like the ones in that game, they had extremely, almost tusk-like teeth coming out of the front. Very similar head too. Very large head. But their bodies were more sleeker, more slender as they tapered off on the back, and the arms and forearms were incredibly long, while the back legs were very muscly, almost kind of acting like a spring. They didn't run like a typical wolf does, or like a dog does. They had more of a hop to their run. Forgive me, as I'm trying to do my best to accurately portray and depict this scene in front of me. All four of them, roughly the same size. Even though they went by so fast, I got a look for a couple of seconds. It was around 5 or 4 p.m. The sun wasn't quite setting just yet, but still set in the sky where there was enough shadows cast that it didn't fill me in on every detail. But what I could see is that they were hot on this trail, chasing this moose. I wasn't initially frightened by the actual sighting, although I was a little bit disturbed by how large these wolves were, larger than anything I'd ever been taught, larger than anything that I thought even existed. So I'd asked some friends and colleagues about large wolves, and if they knew anything about them. I had told a couple of colleagues, and they kind of just shrugged their shoulders, not really knowing what it was. A few days later, I actually got called into the office by my supervisor, who sat me down and asked me that he believes that I saw something the other day, wanted me to elaborate on what it is. I told him exactly what I just told you. He got very stern, very serious, almost angry with me, and I remember him telling me that it's in my career's best interest to not say anything to anybody about it and to just act as if nothing happened. Puzzled, I wasn't quite sure what he was getting at, or why this was some thing that I should keep quiet. He refused to answer any questions I had, though. Then he sent me on my way. I wouldn't stay with that job much longer, due to dating a girl who was states away, and eventually moving, and finding a different career altogether. But it's still an experience that I've had that's very strange, and now that I've kind of been sucked into your channel, and learning all about these cryptids, it does pretty much match up to what I saw, at least the dogmen, based on your descriptions. But if anything is like your stories prove, I'm glad they didn't target me, because I'm sure I would have been dead.